This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. And we start out today in Europe, where the auto industry is going through the beginning stages of a massive disruption. New car sales in Europe never really recovered from the COVID pandemic and are running at 2 million units below where they were before. The transition to electric vehicles is going much slower than anticipated, and Chinese automakers are making strong inroads in an already crowded market. Volkswagen's CFO has warned that the company only has one to two years to get things turned around. In France, the Federation of Vehicle Equipment Industries, which represents automotive suppliers, warns that they'll lose half of their jobs before the decade is over. And if that starts to happen, we think you're going to see a big backlash against Chinese imported cars. In Germany, Continental AG, one of the world's largest suppliers, is getting closer to spinning off its traditional auto parts business. The new standalone company has 100,000 employees and sales over 20 billion euros a year and could have a market cap of 4.3 billion. But it's likely that Conti had to do a spin-off because it couldn't find anyone to buy the business. In Italy, Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney says that the ban on ICE cars starting in 2035 could destroy the EU's industrial base. She says the ban is, quote, self-destructive. We say if auto plants start closing and people start losing their jobs, there will be enormous political pressure to back off the ICE ban. And in a related move, Mercedes-Benz gave up on its joint venture with BYD to sell luxury cars in China under the Denza brand. It started selling vehicles in 2014, but by 2021, Mercedes cut its share to 10%, and now it's selling that off because the Denza brand has not seen much success, even though the latest versions use BYD's BEV and PHEV tech and feature Mercedes styling, and they were sold in Mercedes showrooms. That should be a warning to all foreign automakers in China. Even using the latest Chinese tech, Mercedes wasn't able to move the metal. While all foreign automakers are scrambling to improve their lineups in China, it looks like they'll never get back to the sales and market share that they enjoyed just four years ago. And Chinese automakers continue to expand around the globe as well. Great Wall Motors signed a memorandum of understanding with a group in Vietnam to form a partnership to assemble CKD, or completely knock down vehicles in the country. Production is expected to start next year. Next up, we move over to Dubai, where BYD opened a new showroom, its second in the city, and it plans to open new outlets in three more cities in the United Arab Emirates by the end of the year. And lastly, GAC Group's AION brand opened its first showroom in Manila, AION says it also has partnerships with dealers in three other cities in the Philippines. There's nothing wrong with heavy metal. Hey, light enough. But with world-class composite material, Tejin Automotive Technologies makes vehicles lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly. All 2025 model year vehicles sold in the U.S. are required to have a rear seat reminder system and the refreshed Sienna minivan will be the first Toyota vehicle in the world to get it. The system uses radar to scan the second and third row for movement after the van is shut off. If it does detect movement, warnings will progress over time from triggering the hazard lights and sounding the door lock chime all the way up to attempting an automated phone call from Toyota Safety. Additional changes to the Sienna include new wheel designs, fresh colors and patterns in areas like the seats, and new materials for other parts of the van like the center console. That center console also features a new built-in vacuum and a storage bin that has a cooling function. Lastly, new dual 12.3-inch displays are standard on some trims while available on others. Pricing starts at just under 40 grand, not including destination charges, and sales kick off this fall. Modern EV batteries will outlast the car they're in. On top of that, a study by Geotab says the batteries will also retain much of their original life. It looked at the battery health of 5,000 private and fleet EVs and found that the average modern battery degrades at 1.8% a year, 
while the top EVs only go down by 1% a year. And that average is 22% better than five years ago. At the current rate, the average battery will still have 64% of its original life after 20 years. But the supply chain for lithium-ion batteries is rife with human rights abuses, according to a new report from Infios. It says its research found that 75% of lithium-ion battery suppliers have supply chains that use one or more companies accused of forced or child labor abuses. The abuses occur most frequently at the raw material mining and refining stages, which makes it harder for companies purchasing batteries to identify the risks. Infios used AI to help sift through 20,000 data points from government and NGO reports, news articles, and social media sources between December 2022 and June of this year. It says most of the worst cases of alleged abuse are in China. And with the U.S. and Europe passing legislation recently that prevents the import of goods with forced labor, it could mean that battery supplies are at risk of being banned since China controls most of the raw materials needed to make EV batteries. Some estimates put Tesla's current fleet of semis around 100 units, but it hopes to hit a production run rate of 50,000 trucks a year by 2026. A big part of that will hinge on a new semi plant that Tesla is building next to its current facility in Nevada, which could be open by the end of next year. And while its current fleet is small, the head of the semi program says they've racked up seven and a half million miles and at least one truck has nearly a quarter of a million miles on its odometer. He added that they're averaging 1.6 kilowatt hours per mile and have seen a 95% uptime. Based on that and the ability to travel a thousand miles a day, Tesla says the semi can be a one-to-one -one replacement for a diesel truck. If the charging infrastructure is adequate enough in the area where the truck will be operating, we don't think that Tesla is too far off. NMC, or nickel manganese cobalt batteries for EVs, are gaining more popularity in China thanks to tumbling raw material prices. Several years ago, automakers turned to LFP, or lithium iron phosphate batteries, because they were cheaper. But now automakers like Xiaomi, Li Auto, and Zeker are using what's called medium nickel high voltage batteries, which use less nickel than high nickel batteries, but still offer high energy density and range. LG Energy says these batteries can cut costs by up to 10%, thanks to technical improvements and lower raw material prices. The share of medium nickel production of NMC batteries in China has jumped to 60% from 40% last year, and for now, that slowed the growth of the LFP market. Ever heard of a company called Chargescape? Well, now you're going to. That's the name of an EV charging company put together by Ford, BMW, and Honda. But it's not for public chargers. It's for using bi-directional charging to make the grid more efficient. Cars will automatically charge when demand for electricity is low and will feed electricity back to the grid when demand is high and car owners can earn money by selling that electricity back to the grid. They can also specify at what time of day they want their car to be fully charged, so it's always ready when they need it. Many EV critics say the grid isn't ready for electric vehicles, but Chargescape will actually make the grid more robust. Be sure to tune in to AutoLine After Hours tomorrow when Bob Lutz will be on the show. Now 92 years old, he's still sharp as a tack and has some great insights into what's going on in today's auto industry. So don't miss it. Tomorrow's show could be a classic. That's a wrap for today. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering boost your game. MEDC where Michigan businesses are powering the future of mobility. And by Tajan Automotive Technologies, the formula for better mobility. Developing today's vehicles. Issues can happen in an instant. When's the best time to solve a problem? The minute you know you have one. 
Meet Wireless Neofi Cloud, your secure, off-the-shelf solution empowering real-time collaboration for quick resolution. With Wireless Neofi Cloud, your team can prevent issues before they can escalate. Driver, communication data, and remote diagnostics to analyze and resolve your problems using OTA. Allowing your executives oversight throughout the process. Wireless Neofi Cloud, your vehicle update solution in production and on the road. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Electric vehicle economy. Forget the political noise. EVs mean good American jobs. Tens of thousands of manufacturing jobs. Right here, right now in Michigan. And more on the way with billions in new investment. Want those jobs in China instead? We don't. We're the American EV Jobs Alliance. We say electric vehicles are a big part of the future. And we want those jobs in America. So remember, when politicians bash EVs, America loses. Paid for by the American EV Jobs Alliance. Performance that shines, even in the rain. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Potenza tires, improved grip in wet conditions. So when we did our research for the talent that we need for this program, Michigan was really the top of the list. In order to be successful in this space, you really have to have the right people, the right mindset, the right environment.